Well, this is different to my normal films. Quite interesting, actually. Give it a try. Breathe in. For those of you who only watch the railway films, there is a railway connection look. This has been kept as found. This is when you get a lot of respect for the people that uh, do the renovations on these things when you see what they have to start with. It's an AEC Regal 3, built in 1950. And it's one of the last half cabs to be bought for the South Midland service from Oxford to London. In 1959, it was sold on first to Fosways of Kensington and then to two operators in Cardigan. In 1979, it was found in the yard of T.S. Lewis of Hrad Lewis and bought to be added to the museum collection. The photos show the coach in service with two of those operators and on its way back to Oxfordshire. It's displayed as found with the intention that one day it might be restored. Look at this beast. Bus building from the time of the Great War, so called. There's the um, <coughs> power unit. I don't suppose it gave out much power by today's standards. But it probably got it along. And now look at that, there's an oiler there, look, on the chassis for the shackle pin. Absolutely amazing, that's forward thinking. Wonderful. Ah, needs a little bit of uh, rubbing compound and a spot of polish, don't you think? But look, this is 1913, and yet it's already got the basic shape that really carried forward into the modern day. The crude controls. Good Lord. Half shaft's been withdrawn by the looks. All modern springing. For your convenience. Ooh. I don't like that. All wooden construction. Carrying over from the horse and cart days, I guess. But yes, wonderful. This then is a Commer WP3, owned by Lord Lonsdale. They certainly wanted to be noticed when they were off to the races. Built in 1913. Next we have a Morris 1 ton Charabang. Marvellous beast. Fully air conditioned as you can see. As in the air comes in and you get conditioned to it. Built in 1925. And looking at the horseshoe, next we have an 1881 horse drawn tram. Look at that for standard of restoration. Absolutely marvellous. One horsepower engine at the front. Emergency braking system. Right. That beautiful. Now that looks in there like coil springs. Never is. How lovely. Wonderful. Now if there is a Morris Minor of coaches, this must be it. Excuse me, madam. Excuse me, I'm trying to thank you. This is a Bedford OB Duple, built in 1949. And they were built in huge numbers. There are 250 just in this area alone. So if you're of a certain age, you will, uh, you'll find these things very familiar. They were absolutely everywhere. Wonderful, reliable beast, I guess. One 
morning. Teach yourself. Oh, sliding roof. Height of luxury. What an absolutely wonderful find. And this is this very coach in front of the queue. Gentleman's Day Out by the looks. Yeah, a splendid find. I'm sure it brings back memories to one or two of you as well. Good. Next we have a double decker bus. This is an AEC Region 3. Built in 1953 and it's the classic double decker design of the period. Made to maximum dimensions. Built to last. Look at the size of that spring. How many thousands of people will have walked onto there? On their way to work, going to the shops, meeting family, going to the pictures. How many thousands of people in there? We pop up to the upper deck. Look at that. How wonderful. You can imagine this packed on a steamy rainy day with condensation running down the windows. <laughs> Best seat in the house. Smoking allowed up here. With plenty of ventilation. <laughs> Emergency door. You'd be in big trouble if you had to use that. I don't know if that's so you can see down or they can see up. Both probably. Yeah. Hmm. Push once. Wow. And more ventilation. And all the lighting you could possibly hope for. Well. Transportation for the masses. The driver didn't have many home comforts, did he either? And these old things just went on and on and on. A bit like me, really. Standing next door here is an AEC Reliance. We've jumped forward to 1972. Chiltern Queen's bus company no longer going. I don't think AEC is either. The office, rather spartan. Another giant leap forward now, 1995. And we have a Dennis Dart with Plaxton bodywork. Oh, Dennis. Much more modern shape now, mod cons. Smooth lines, latest health and safety grab rails. Even the driver gets off better in this one. Slightly. The Kidlington Cavalier apparently refers to Oxford's connection to the Royalists in the Civil War. And all this mechanism, all this work here, is to keep the wiper blade upright as it crosses the screen. That's a complicated mechanism. There's a mirror there for looking back, and on the subject of looking back, here's some old photographs. Bus is in trouble. And that's real trouble. Oops. I bet that got their attention. We are far from done. This is a 1915 Daimler Y chassis. It was a lorry built for the First World War. Of course, once the war had finished, they all became surplus to requirement. 
So the bus companies took them up. Leaf spring and rod brakes, universal joint for the prop shaft, or solid wheels of course. And look at that, I wouldn't want to swing that on a cold winter morning. The office, centre throttle, and I reckon somebody nicked that off their, uh, out of their house. Standing proud. I look down the chassis from the business end. And another look at the controls. And there you can see the gear lever and the handbrake mechanism. Here is something you won't see every day. It's a sectioned bus, so you can see how it's constructed. That's the axle there. You can see the floor up above. I'm not sure if those are air tanks for brakes or for the heating system. A power unit, an old AEC unit. These ones will run for hundreds of thousands of miles if you take reasonable care of them. Leaf spring. Next we have a very, very rare survivor. This is a 1932 open top bus. Look at the horn. <laughs> Lovely. This had operated in Oxford for a while and then it was uh, purchased and went down to the seaside where it ferried happy, smiling, laughing holiday makers up and down the seafront. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? The usual office. Splendid. A 1932 Regal chassis. Now the significance of this is it was actually built for a bus. When you have a lorry it's kind of up in the air a bit. But on this one because they've managed to do some clever work with the axles they've lowered the body in effect so your passengers now don't have to climb a ladder to actually get into the thing. Of course then they have to make a space for all the oily bits and pieces. Gearbox to the back of the engine, foot controls, part of the steering, gearbox controls, the fuel tank. But it's very, very innovative. And actually started off proper bus building. So that was 1932. This is 1977. That's a Bristol 70 seat double decker. Let's go have a quick look around. Two more vehicles I'd like to show you quickly. This is a luxury coach built on a Ford 1014 chassis in 1980. And this is built for the upper market. Big windows, plenty of light, and all that wood veneer. Now look at the amount of light there is in here. That's wonderful, isn't it? The driver has joined us now, again surrounded by wood veneer. Absolutely amazing. Overhead luggage racks, same as the airline industry. Seat belts. And overhead um, ventilation and lighting, again copied from the airline industry. So you knew you were in luxury when you travelled on this vehicle.
panoramic uh, sunroof. Look at that chrome! <laughs> right, and now the next vehicle is a vehicle built to a purpose. This was built as a result of the M40 opening in 1977, which meant that with the right machinery you could now get into London in 100 minutes from Oxford, and so that resulted in this uh, lovely bus. Wonderful piece of machinery, and again, wood veneer, no headrests on the seat, well proper headrests, but an overhead rack. Very good, very luxurious. Triple sunroofs. And that's how roads make buses. Right. And the gallery is where you can go and watch restoration taking place. This is the museum workshops through here. A special treat. And then if you have a wander around outside, there's all sorts of vehicles parked up here. Buses of course. I think some of them belong to the museum and some of these are privately owned. Stored here and then no doubt rolled out on high days and holidays. And meanwhile we give the public it to have a close look. Now, if this has given you an appetite for restoration and you fancy restoring an old bus, the museum can help you out there as well. There you go. Have a go at that lot. Interested? Price on application, the cylinder block needs a little bit of work. That will provide you with the photograph so you can see what the finished job should look like. And this I really needs a little bit of rubber. Well, a little bit of rubbing down, lick of paint, won't look so bad. There you go. Pause to read if you're interested. And now you've been very good. So we're going to go out with a special treat. Stand by. Well I hope you enjoyed that. I'd be very grateful if you were to subscribe, like or share. I'll catch you on the next one.